Among the stacks and in the midst of the biography section, I sat pondering the thoughts of some modern day philosopher. I spent many a night in this section away from the human interaction that lay out on the streets beyond the wall of books. In this place, I would not be questioned, irritated, or judged by a society that feeds upon me. <sighs> yeah, things you say, eh? Oh, okay. I sat quietly paralleling my own being to that of this philosopher, reflecting on questions that I had come to know about my own existence. Hours before I had sat at a desk, pencil pushing, alert to every detail and action I took. I would become lost in my own little chaotic world of confusion, awaiting a moment of peace. Silence seemed to creep through the labyrinth of periodicals, journals, and paperbacks, only to be trampled by the onset of two young girls running throughout the rows of books. The loud plodding of their feet pounded at my solitude. <sighs> the crescendo of their infant giggles, racing, it gets better. Um, <sighs> <laughs> Racing throughout the book-built maze pulled my eyes toward them. I watched as they disappeared into the fiction section. Then, in turning, I noticed the man in the study carol behind me was severely hunched over. He must be sleeping, I reassured myself, beginning to find this very amusing. Looking closer, I saw no motion of respiration in his bulky mass. Could he be? No, that's ridiculous. I conversed with myself as fear began to spark within my body. I noticed that we were the only people in this section and therefore came to a dreadful conclusion. What happens if they find me reading philosophy to a dead man? What will I say? I thought of leaving right away before he could be discovered and exiting down the back stairwell. I started to pack up my books. Preparing to leave, I looped my scarf around my neck and reached for my jacket. In putting it on, I grabbed my bag and crept silently away from him. Slowly, turning to venture down the rows of fiction, I nervously, cried, I nervously eyed every row in fear of being observed before I withdrew. The crescendo of giggles resumed, and upon hearing them, I became engulfed with horror. I <laughs> cursed the little hellions, and I hurriedly raced to get to the exit before they discovered me. The sweat began dripping from my brow. As I ran, I carried my bag tucked into my stomach as a receiver would carry a football into the end zone. <laughs> Hi there, mister. What you doing? A squeaky, high-pitched voice questioned me. I halted. Disgusted and defeated, I said, nothing. And I sullenly returned down the long corridor to my seat. There he sat still, slouched over like a top-heavy sack of potatoes, his black horn-rimmed glasses delicately perched on the end of his nose. Irritated, I sat there, my fingers tapping some melodramatic composition that added to my frustration. <laughs> I rose from my seat, creeping towards the body, hoping to satisfy my curiosity and confirm my assumptions. I neared him. Th as I neared him, the stiff bristles of his semi-brush cut seemed to point out a disgusting thought that soon rigor mortis would set in. <laughs> the folded ripples of his blue knit sweater seemed to encase his body within the stiff, dark, coffin-like structure of his brown suede jacket. <laughs> Beyond him was a mess of open books, well-read letters, and a, collection, uh, and a collection of favored events. I leaned closer, uh, noticing that the, book, the open book in front of him contained a picture of Jane Russell clad in a bikini, smiling superficially, while the cover of the book next to it revealed the solemn, stern, empty look of Robert Mitchum. I was intrigued and cautiously looked about, seeing if the coast was clear and feeling possessed. I carefully began picking about through his belongings to search out his identity. Around the corner of the stacks, again, came the irritating cries of the two little demons. Gotcha, cried the taller of the two, and then with a tremendous crack, she lambasted the younger on the head. Giggling, she dis disappeared once again into the maze while the younger one was screaming behind her. I relaxed and lowered the book I had quickly grabbed to conceal my devious intentions. Then an idea hit me, and outstretching my arm, I let go of the book. The cracking sound seemed to dart throughout the maze as the book crashed to the floor below. No movement occurred in the body, not even a flinch. Slowly, I raised my index finger. I leaned towards him and quickly jabbed my finger delicately into his side. <sighs> Once again, no movement, not even a sigh or a shifting of weight. 
Jabbing harder, once again, producing no reaction, I returned to my seat. I, I thought of how uncomfortable it would have been if, if he were alive and I had disturbed him. Then I would have had to explain my actions. Feeling utterly criminal, I sighed, and I leaned over, jabbing him once again. <laughs> After gaining no reaction, I returned to my reading, ignoring his existence. Once again, I lost myself in the dreadful thought of the discovery of the body by some authoritative person, a cynic who would not believe my innocence. With no one to back me up, I could hear them saying, look at his innocent face. He's just the type to be a homicidal killer. <laughs> my heart began to race, and then came the wheezing. His body contorted as a sneeze that resembled the pumping of a basketball overtook him. Startled, he massaged his face, looked at his watch, and repositioning his glasses, rose awkwardly from his chair and commenced collecting his belongings. Once packed, he turned and for the very first time looked at me. His hollow stare emitted pain. It seemed to invade my imagination as I had invaded his territory with my insensitive curiosity. I felt uneasy and silently pleaded for him to let me be. He then smiled and waddled away, disappearing into the periodicals. <laughs> Silence crept back through the labyrinth and I returned to my reading. The reverberating sound of infant feet began nearing me. I watched as the two young girls dodged one another, innocently enjoying themselves, oblivious to the others around them. They danced and giggled out of sight as I watched. I then put aside the book and remembered the dead man's smile. <laughs> Thanks, guys.